Collaborating with Others, part of the 21st Century Skill Series for Teachers and Parents. What is it? Collaboration happens when two or more people work together to accomplish a shared goal. Good communication skills help children develop self-confidence, a good sense of self-worth, and better relationships with everyone around them. Uh, they ask for help, ask for help, um, and I usually look online, help them if, um, for like whatever situation, like if they need help working on the computer, like think, finding out how to do give voice thread on Weebly. In traditional classrooms, the teacher is the information giver. Knowledge flows only one way, from the teacher to the students. But in a 21st century classroom, the teacher is one member of the class who has information to give, but so do all the other children. Information can be accessed by the children through many avenues, including research, through their global network, or through experimentation. Teachers spend less class time lecturing and more of their time answering questions and assessing, preventing problems and meeting the needs of each student. Students spend less time being bored or misbehaving, and they spend more time developing interpersonal skills while completing challenging activities. A strong classroom community is developed thanks to collaborative activities. Boys and girls work side by side with no discomfort. Weaker students discover areas of strength and become experts for others to come to, while stronger students experience some challenges that require them to go to others in class for help. Self-esteem and personal pride is evened out in a collaborative classroom. Mixed ability or randomly assigned groups dominate the collaborative classroom because traditional skills take a back seat to 21st century skills when working together as a team to solve problems and investigate topics. Collaboration has several pros and cons. Here are some that I've listed. First, some pros are that more minds are better than one. Everyone learns from each other through the process. Collaboration gets everyone to interact with each other. Students become more reliant on each other instead of the teacher, and therefore it causes the student's confidence to grow. You don't really want to do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. I like to do it with uh, like other people, so you have more help, and they can look up stuff, so you can, they can give you information, you can just write it down on a poster or something. A few cons are that there are lots of opportunities for children to become stressed. There are disagreements, someone not doing their fair share, and someone being bossy can cause children stress. Therefore, leadership and interpersonal skills must be practiced in order to achieve success in collaboration. There's also less individual accountability in collaborative activities. Some students might get away with doing less work than others. One final con about collaboration is that some introverts and shy students might be uncomfortable working together as a group. I recommend the TED Talk by Susan Cain, on introverts. In that TED talk, she makes strong arguments uh, against collaboration. However, I still believe the importance of collaboration, especially for introverted or shy students, I feel that these are skills that they'll need to develop in order to be more successful in their 21st century world. Well, um, you can always encourage them or try to include them. Um, that can always sometimes get them engaged in an activity, but sometimes that just doesn't work and they don't want to do it. There are many skills that we work on in our classroom that help students become better members of a team. These include teaching students how to be leaders without being bossy, so assertiveness, not aggressiveness. And on the flip side, some students are natural leaders and need more help letting go and letting others take the lead, so I teach some passivity. An arbor day towards the end is when I started letting other people become the leader. Some examples of collaborative activities that we've used in our classroom is using Google Docs or Google Presentations to uh, have students work together and show their learning about a subject. Here we've got an Oregon Trail slideshow where students pretty much all had a day assigned to them where they had to enter a slide um, working with a partner to create kind of a reflection of what they had learned on the day. Since Google Docs and Google Presentations can be accessed by all the students in the classroom, Students did go back and look, find out what other people created for slides, and they learned from each other doing that. Another activity that we use collaboration for were uh, our blog for our Oregon Trail simulation. Uh, every day that we had an activity, students would write a blog entry, and others could read it and respond. We also had uh, another blog-type writing assignment where it was called the Really Unrealistic Adventures 
of the, our journey west and this was kind of a fictional um, it didn't have to be realistic at all and the students as you can tell wrote even more than the regular blog because they really got into this activity and enjoyed it an awful lot uh, one final activity to show you today uh, is if you go on our website to the human body final assessment and reflection page and scroll down you can see that uh, on the left we have our posters that we did before we studied the human body systems then we learned the instruction for the unit uh, if you notice we have a video in the center I'll talk to you about in a minute and on the right we had a reflection which was kind of what we learned from the entire unit uh, so back to that middle part is we did a video we made our own poster based on these required organs for our posters I gave them a list of organs that they needed to do and we made a poster based on that uh, and then we explained where each of the organs were and we videotaped it and put it onto YouTube. So these are now available for people to see. Um, you can see they work together as a group, three or four students together, researching where these organs belong, uh, putting them onto the poster using construction paper, labeling everything, putting things relative to the correct size, shape, and position in the body. They seem to learn a lot and enjoy the activity. The three behaviors I try to assess my students on for collaboration are demonstrate the ability to work effectively and respectfully with diverse teams, exercise flexibility and willingness to be helpful in making necessary compromises to accomplish a common goal, and assume shared responsibility for collaborative work and value the individual contributions made by each team member. For more information on 21st Century Skills, visit the Partnership for 21st Century Skills at www.p21.org. To see more of what I'm doing with my fifth graders, visit our classroom website at psolars.weebly.com. Check out the Educators tab, as well as the Past, Present, and Future tabs to see the projects and activities that we're doing in class. Also, feel free to email me any questions that you have to psolars at sd25.org. Finally, be sure to check out other episodes of the 21st Century Skills Series for Teachers and Parents available on this YouTube channel. Thank you.